six panels. Three of them are already on the roof. And I just wanted to show you the hardest part of the whole process is unboxing and getting them on the roof. So as you can see, there's a lot of waste involved, all the boxing and the packaging. Now the hardest part of all is to actually get them on the roof. Well, the hard part's done. I only sustained one injury. I had a supervisor here and took care of everything. She was pretty easy on me though. So that's that part. The next part is to actually install them on the roof, to mount them on the roof. And I'm gonna show you how that's done, the way I'm going to do it. And then we'll connect all the wiring and run it down to the batteries and inverter and the charge controllers. We'll do that tomorrow. Supervisor says it's time to take a break. <laughs> so we're gonna take a break. <laughs> Thank you very much. Appreciate a break, man. Now that we've got our solar panels on top, our six solar panels, I'll add four or more later on. Let's go up there and assess the situation. How are we going to uh, place our solar panels? This may be the configuration that I'm gonna use once I set them. This is a TPO roof. I've got to clean this off. Well, the next phase of our uh, installation, we're going to put uh, put our feet on. We're going to install our feet or our brackets onto our uh, solar panels. We are going to install 24 of these since I have six panels, six down four, 24. And uh, so I'm going to do that right now. And then we'll go to the next phase. Well, I got my trusty drill with the 7 16 socket. This ought to do it. One down, five to go. One of the things to be aware of is when you're using a drill in such a fashion, be cautious of the sudden stop. You have your arm up like this and it stops suddenly. It can break your arm. Many arms have been broken this way. Take it slow. This is the last one, all the brackets on. Now I have to place them and mount them. I wanted to give you a little update. I've been working around three hours and I got three panels hooked up generating electricity. And that's the two on the right and the one in the middle all the way at the back. It's quite a job. And what I want to do on the last one, that's this one right here, is show you how I'm mounting it. This is a TPO roof. It's got one eighth inch of rubber on plywood. My screws are only three quarter inches. It's a labor of love. Okay, I better get back to it. Well, I just went downstairs and checked, and on the three panels, we're producing 345 watts. That's to be expected since the batteries are almost full. The charge controller will start backing down, so I'm very pleased with this. Now I'm gonna hook up the other three. Well, it's been a long day. I decided to mount the last one right here, and I'm gonna film it in time lapse. So 
I'm going to go back to time lapse, put in the screws and the die core. Well, that's the last one. They're all six mounted. I do want to tell you something. It's a lot of money and a lot of work to do this. At the end, I'm going to add up how much all this costs for parts and kit. I've been working on this for days. It's worth it in the end, but if you're not prepared to do a lot of work, don't get involved in this. Well, they're all connected. i got to run some wiring, hook it all up, and I'll be done with it for now. You can tell by my voice I'm tired. So. I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Hope you guys have a good day. Well, I suspect I'm pretty much done with this solar install. We're going to take a look at the system. I'm going to show you from top to bottom how this thing works. It's installed. It's generating electricity. At the end of this video, I'm going to show you how much all this costs. Uh, incidentally, let me tell you, this is not a cost efficient uh, venture. This is not to save money. This is to gain independence what it costs to put this system in if you're trying to save money this is not the way to do it these systems are very expensive especially if you go as large as i like to do so i got two arrays it's three panels each with this this has got three blacks and three reds therefore with this one single combiner here i can put all three on one one aw 10 awg wire going down and there you can see the second one over there that's it and i'm going to show you downstairs what we got now i'm going to show you you got the two cables coming down they're coming down the ladder and i'm going to clean this up a little bit but i'm just doing this for demonstration purposes it goes under the rv here both of them go under the rv now here they're coming along right here this is where all the batteries and the inverters and stuff are, and it's coming into a plug that was already pre-drilled pre right there. And here they are, both of them. I'm gonna fix these a little better and clean all this up. As you can see, this RV is all the way across. That's the port side, this is the starboard side. And I've got all these systems over here. I've got the inverter, charge controller, and the batteries on this side, and I'll show you. And I'll show you how this works. A typical RV has 50 amp service. You'll see that. That's 50 amp service right there. Now what I have is a surge protector hooked to the our supply cord here. It comes right on through. Now all I have to do is take this cord right here. This is to the inverter right here. And then plug it into that. I'm not going to do it because we're using it right now. But you can see that's 50 amp service right there. And that plugs into this. And you can see it goes all the way through here, all the way to the other side. 30 amp cable, and it simply stores right in here until when I need it, right there. That's it. This is our storage compartment right here, right here. It just so happened this RV was perfectly set up for solar. Here we are, right here. This is the system. This is the 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter which I've got plugged in my 30 amp service here, which goes to the cord I showed, the plug I showed you a few minutes ago. This is the Victron 100 amp charge controller. Very efficient. The amount of solar panels I have on the roof, I could double that. Or at least I could put the same amount again and this would handle it. This would handle 12 panels. And you see what I've got, I've got it coming in. This is the two cables coming in right here. This one, this one, and this one. They're coming in and they land right here on a 100 amp breaker. And this breaker takes both of them to our charge controller. The negative, the two negatives just simply go right to the charge controller. Now, this is for the solar panels. This off switch it goes through this off switch before it goes to the charge controller. I can turn my panels off. You see, it's at 13.6. I'm going to turn them on. It's already up to 13.7. It's charging the battery already up to 13.7. In order to charge the batteries, I've got this one cable. It goes from, 
another breaker I have here, a 100 amp breaker, goes to this side of the battery, and the negative from the charge controller goes to this side of the battery. The inverter, the negative goes from this side of the battery, and the positive from this side of the battery. You can see this is the negative, or this is the negative for the inverter. This is the positive for the inverter. It's that right there. And the whole thing goes to a 300 amp box fuse. The Battleborn batteries I already have, already on them. There's one, two, three, four. They're in series. The negative from number one battery goes to this one, to this one, to this one. The positive goes from this one to this one to this one. And what you're doing, in essence, is creating one big battery. This is all connected now in parallel. In essence, you've got a 400 amp, 12 volt bank system. And that's pretty much it. We have tested this already. This inverter right here will run our air conditioner that's on the top of the unit. It will run the entire air conditioner cool. You can see we're already up to 13.9 volts. It'll go up to 14.3 and the charge controller will shut it down. That's the system. Now let's talk about what this costs, the system costs. The Victron charge controller costs $516. I ordered all this from Amazon and then it had a display on it that cost $32. The Eternabond double side tape cost $48. I'm rounding this off. The screws cost $10. The die core cost $10. I bought four of them, but I only used one. Four of them was $40. The 300 amp box fuse, I bought three of them. It was $13 for the three of them. I only used one, but I went ahead and charged the $13. The Renogy 300 watt pure sine wave inverter cost $354. The three way combiners I showed you up there, the wires, the 10, w 10 AWG wires. That cost $30 for the two of them, the adapters. The Z brackets cost $22. The 50 feet 10 AWG solar cable with the outer sleeve cost $80. That was for 50 feet. I need two 25 foot runs, so that worked great. Solar panels, six of them, that cost $150 each. Give a few pennies here and there. That was $900. And that was a total of $2,016. Now, I already own the batteries, all the cabling, most of the cabling, the big cabling, various little parts and pieces I needed. The batteries I bought four years ago, they're about the same now, $925 each. And I have four of them for a total of $3,700 for the batteries. You don't have to do that though. They make batteries now. Then they weren't making them as much. They make batteries now quite a bit. You can buy some pretty good batteries for $250 each. These are 100 amp hour batteries that provide 1200 watts per battery. Four batteries, that's 4,800 watts uh, in the bank. That's a total $5,916 to put this system in. I did the work myself. If you paid somebody to do this, it would be about $12,000. I like to put it in, I like to do things myself. This way I know what's going on. So, I wanna thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helps you. I hope it helps anybody thinking about doing this. We like to boondock, we need electricity, we like it this way. And we thank you, be sure to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, hit the notification bell, or leave a comment. And we thank you very much for joining us today, and happy 4th of July, if I don't see you before then. And thank you.